Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today, in a continuation of learning how to add fractions, we are going to be adding mixed numbers. Okay? We are in our math journal, volume 2, on page 162. That's unit 5, lesson 4. Now, some of you might be looking at this and thinking, oh, but Mr. Wassman, I don't know much about mixed numbers. Well, you might surprise yourself by realizing that you've been exposed to mixed numbers almost all of your life. And of course, that's in the form of money, okay? Amounts of money, prices for things, are usually represented as mixed numbers when we see a whole dollar amount and an amount in cents, okay? Cents are the fractional amount of a dollar. So when I have something that costs $1.95, like, say, for example, uh, a quart of orange juice, okay, that is more than one dollar, but less than two dollars. It's somewhere in between. Now, let's say I'm at the grocery store and I need to pick up a quart of orange juice and I want to get a dozen eggs, which is a dollar twenty-five. So, in order to figure out what my total bill is going to be, I just have to add those two amounts. And I would approach this problem just like I would any addition problem. I'm going to start on the right-hand side and go from right to left, uh, thinking about the place values. Okay, So I'm going to add 5 plus 5. That's going to give me 10. I'm going to carry that dime because 10 cents is the same as one dime, or a tenth. So 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. And I'm going to carry the whole dollar amount because when I have 12 dimes, that's the same as saying $1.20. And then I just add my dollars. One, two, three. My total grocery bill is going to be $3.20. So I look at the two amounts I need to add. I, I organize them vertically. I start from right to left, adding the fractional parts first, and then the whole number parts. And then I've got my answer. So that's what I'm going to do in the story problem. It says... Uh, solve the number stories, use a different strategy for each one. Balram drew a line segment two and one-fourth inches long. Then he made the line segment one and two-fourths inches longer. How long is the line segment now? Now, when I quickly run through the ruckus strategy of rereading the problem, underlining the question, circling the important information, and coming up with an action plan, I learned that Balram drew a line segment that was two and a quarter inches long, and then he made his line segment one and two-fourths inches longer. How long is the line segment now? Now, my action plan is no mystery here because the title of our uh, lesson here is adding. So I'm probably going to have to add. So what is my addition problem? Well, I'm going to add two and a quarter and one and two-fourths. Okay, so here's my number model. 2 and 1 fourths plus 1 and 2 fourths equals an unknown. Let's say L for line segment. Okay? So I need to now add those two together. Now, the whole, that's just my unit. So that's a line segment. Okay? So one way for me to solve this mixed number addition problem is to just simply add the two amounts together. Now, along this line, my number model is horizontal, but I want to reorganize it so it's vertical so I can line up the place values. And when I am adding fractions together, the first thing I have to do is i got to think about, uh, do I have like denominators? Because if I don't, I have to think about equivalent fractions. But Fortunately, for this problem, we do have like denominators, fourths. So I can just uh, assume my fractional answer is going to be in fourths, okay? And all I have to do is add the numerators, or top numbers, together. One plus two. Well, that's going to give me three, three-fourths. And there's no regrouping involved, so all I have to do is add the whole number parts, two plus one. And, of course, that gives me three. So my total for the... Uh, line segment measurement is 3 and 3 fourths inches. Now that I think about it, 
shouldn't say line segment, it should say inches for my units, my unit of measure. My line segment is what I was creating, but I'm going to measure it in inches. You know, even uh, us teachers make mistakes from time to time, or uh, jump the gun, or make an assumption about stuff. Okay? But that's all there is to adding mixed numbers. you got to remember, you have to start with the fractional parts first. We go from right to left with our uh, place values. We have to remember, if there's a grouping involved, you've got to regroup. And then uh, we just compute, okay? Like we do down here, problems three through six, okay? Now let's take a look at number four, for example, because that is going to involve some regrouping. Now they, they uh, conveniently uh, lined up the problems vertically, so we can see that I'm adding 50 hundredths to 75 hundredths uh, in this problem. And when I have hundredths, for both my denominators, I don't have to do any uh, converting to equivalents, so I, I know my answer is going to be in the hundredths. But I'm going to be adding 50 plus 75. Well, 50 cents plus 75 cents would be a buck and a quarter, or a dollar twenty-five, or 125 cents, or hundredths, because I always think of hundredths in the terms of cents. And then I just add the uh, whole numbers, 3 plus 4, and that gives me 7. Now, are we done? Well, if this were a normal fraction, then yes, we would be done. But we have a mixed, uh, we have a, a mixed number being made with an improper fraction, and that won't stand. And that's because a mixed number already implies that there are whole number amounts and fractional amounts. An improper fraction says the same thing. I have more parts than is required to make one whole. So the pairing of the two doesn't work. So I have to convert 125 hundredths into something else, another mixed number. So 125 hundredths, okay, or $1.25 as I uh, alluded to before, is tw uh, 25 cents more than a dollar, right? So I could think of 125 as one group of 100 hundredths plus 25 left over, a dollar 25, or 1 and 25 hundredths. So what I have here is not 7 and 125 hundredths, I have 7 and 1 and 25 hundredths. And again, to make that an easier amount to kind of mentally digest, I just have to add the whole number parts. And what's 7 plus 1, everyone? Well, of course, that would be 8. So my total is 8 and 25 hundredths, which is how I get that answer. Okay. So again, I added the fractional parts first. There was some regrouping to do, so I had to do some regrouping. And then I added my whole number amounts together. And that gave me my answer. Okay. An extra step thrown in there compared to just adding uh, fractions together. But, you know, with multi-step problems, you just have to remember to do each step one at a time in the order that they come. Okay. And I am sure that you can do it. Okay. But if you still are a little unsure of yourself, uh, you need to talk to your math teacher. Ask them questions. Have them demonstrate these problems for you. Okay, their job is to help you, but they can't help you if they don't know that you need help. So ask questions. Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and uh, until we uh, talk again, have a good day and good luck. Thanks.